Hello, all. Welcome to Island Imprints, a visual artist panel discussion um, brought to you today by Broward County Library. My name is Loria Tillman. I work at the West Regional Library with Broward County. Um, as you come in as a participant, you will notice that your uh, sound is muted. Um, if you have any questions, there is a chat feature on your screen. If you move your mouse cursor down towards the bottom of your screen, you will see a chat box and you can click on that and that will open the chat and you can type in your questions there. Um, we are being moderated today by the lovely Khalid Thompson of Island Space and I will shortly turn it over to her to get the discussion started with our wonderful artists and the information that they're bringing today. Okay, so let me do that. stop sharing. And Khalib, I'm now making you host. Mm -hmm. And it is all yours. All right. Good afternoon, Loria. Good afternoon, artists. Good afternoon, attendees. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, we're really happy to be here because we have, we meaning myself and David Muir, who you'll be introduced to shortly, um, have been working with West Regional Library for some time now. We've uh, we've done ex exhibitions there, multiple exhibitions for David, just one for me. And, um, you know, it's, it's a great partnership with the community. Uh, we recently started, David and I, who have been working together for the past three years, recently started a brand new nonprofit called Island Space. Uh, so we will start off by kind of introducing that, but let's introduce ourselves first. So uh, I'm Khalib Thompson. I'm the executive director at Island Space. I am myself an artist of sorts, uh, coming from the music industry, film and television, and now, um, you know, exhibitions and uh, and fine art and, uh, you know, curating and, and um just delving into the the art world uh with both hands in my private life and in my work life david i would love for you to introduce yourself as well now uh, am i to do the nice and clean one or do i have the fun <laughs> you can balance you can balance balance okay well i am david muir i i prefer to be called sexy man but i, I won't go any further than that <laughs> Even alone i am a i guess i'm a career artist i have been working in the arts as long as i've known myself uh, i started in music similar to Khalif, and i've ended up pretty much doing uh, every different angle from working in management with artists to being an artist full-time and I have enjoyed my life as such. I am a photographer, um, known most, I guess you said maybe I'm most, known most as a photographer, but I definitely am a art curator as well. And I am a community activist. I do a lot to share my vision of how we can make the world a better place by being active community participants and by really standing up for what we believe in. And that's really how all my art displays itself. It's extremely realistic. Um, as a photographer, I do not manipulate my images. I am very proud to show the world what it looks like through my eyes. And I am uh, I'm just really thrilled to also be the president of Island Space, a nonprofit. Okay, we're going to get to that in another part. Oh, <laughs> I introduce myself. No. I started. <laughs> I got you. I know when you're on a roll. I know when you're on a roll, right? Um, so let me ask uh, Crystal, who is new to the group. Crystal, welcome. Um, this is your welcome first me. year with us at, you know, in our little group of friends here. So can you introduce yourself, Crystal? Okay, so my name is Crystal Sabdul. I actually, um, I was born here in Miami, Florida, but I've lived my entire life in Jamaica. Um, my parents are Jamaican and, you know, I, I moved to Jamaica as a, a baby. So I was raised, I'm, I'm Jamaican through and through. Um, I, um, I currently teach art at the elementary level. So I work with kids daily and um, I've worked with some nonprofit organizations uh, giving back to children, both of them giving back to children. Uh, one of them giving back to Jamaican children specifically providing for schools uh, in Jamaica. Um, I'm a portrait artist. I started my career as a portrait artist a few years ago. 
Um, it's going really well for me. I'm not formally trained, even though I've had a, a, a short stint at Edna Manley School of Arts in Jamaica. So I, um, I'm relying on my gut here when I, I <laughs> work, just, you know, what feels right to me. Um, but I'm doing I'm very well with truth. that. Yes, I'm speaking my truth through that. Uh, I guess it's coming across to people and they're appreciating it. And I'm, I, I've been getting a lot of opportunities since then. And so this is another opportunity for me to be a part of your wonderful group here. And I'm very honored. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's Crystal Sabdul. Uh, her website is crystalsabdul.com. David is David I Photo or um, I don't think he was able to get sexyman.com, but I know he's working on it. Um, let us now go on to Sonia Sanchez Arias, who is a longtime member of the crew, and she's a Trini. Uh, Sonia, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, so I'm Sonia Sanchez Arias. I am a mixed media artist. I graduated from Rochester Institute of Technology in um, photographic arts and sciences. So, um, for, you know, my main profession is a photographer. I'm married to commercial photographer, um, but I am very much a mixed media artist. And a lot of my artwork, even my photography, when I display it, um, I use a lot of mixed um, recycled materials. That's a very important thing for me to teach people to stop just thinking of objects as single use items and to repurpose them, transform them and to use them in a way where they have a new history and a new, re a new reason for existing. So I mix a lot of different things in my art, my photography, um, I'm a bit of a mad scientist. Um, <laughs> I, I think of myself that way more than an artist because I experiment with very unusual materials yes. and yes. incorporate them into my work. And make them fabulous. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. So let's actually start at the beginning because this presentation is, uh, is, is done in part by uh, Broward County Library System, but also by Island Space, which is the nonprofit organization that I am the executive director of, and David Sexyman Muir is the president of, and that's his official name, by the way. Um, Mr. Muir, Mr. Sexyman, can you please talk about uh, Island Space? What what is Island Space? Wow, I have to put my glasses to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Island Space. Wow, it's it's a lot, you know, so Island Space actually stands for Island Society for the Promotion of Artistic and Cultural Education. And so that's a that's a mouthful. So I like Island Space a lot better. <laughs> um, the vision of the, the nonprofit is to elevate the profile of Caribbean art, history and culture in every way um, throughout South Florida and the broader diaspora. So we, we literally are trying to promote Caribbean art worldwide. But because we're here locally, we start with our base, which is South Florida. The mission of Island Space is to facilitate the creation of artistic, cultural, and you know, socially conscious um, initiatives that educate the public about the valuable contribution of and the, and the positive uh, significance of the Caribbean community. So it's about promoting who we are culturally. You know, it's a lot about the people. So that includes, I think, everyone who is showing their work here in this particular virtual exhibition which we will participate in. But it's more than that. It's all of our families. It's the, the generations before us and really about the generations that come after us. But we really have a pride for who we are. We have a lot of projects. I don't know if you want me to go into all the projects now, Kelly, but uh. um, some of the <laughs> only oh, ones, the, the yeah. premium okay. ones, sure. our Caribbean Museum, which mm will be coming on stream very soon physically, but we, we did a, a version of it um, over the past year. We had a Caribbean Culinary Museum, which was on tour through Broward County. We have a, a upcoming photo art project called Caribbean American, which is about to launch. And it is, uh, we're actually currently accepting submissions from artists for that project. We also have um, the Island Imprint Virtual Museum, which you can go right now to the website of islandspacefl.org 
and you can actually get to click on and and get to see the exhibit but i believe Khalid will be sharing some of that here today and those are some of the current main projects we do have a few others but um you, again i would invite anyone after we finish today to go to islandspacefl.org not .com because it's a nonprofit it's .org so islandspacefl and if you have two screens, you can go to it while we're talking as well. Yeah? Oh, right. For those who are savvy with their computers or their phones and have multiple screens, definitely. Um, yes. free. So, so you talked about art, you talked about culture, you talked about diaspora, um, and there being a historical element to you know the museum project as well as what the organization does. Talk about the island imprint as a project and what 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 the idea behind the exhibition was or is well all the pressure on me huh no <laughs> um, the island imprint you know what and and it's interesting that you ask that island imprint has been a very unique um exhibition because it not only shares the art of the fabulous artists who are on the screen but it also shares the history of the participation of Caribbean Americans in Broward County specifically, but really in South Florida. So uh, it, the, the thing about it was that we are trying, in the same way that I express the mission of what Island Space is, we want to celebrate all of who we are. And while art is our primary focus, there's a lot of other facets to what makes our involvement in the community important. So we didn't want it to be just about art. So it's about infusing the, the, the actual art and the, the work on display, as well as to sort of show the history of involvement in this part of um, South Florida. So it, it's really the culmination of both. And, and Ms. Thompson, I, I know you're conducting the interview, but you can also lend word to parts of the inspiration because you are heavily involved as well. I will not lend word because I'm moderating today and I'm interviewing you. <laughs> um, I, I, I will say thanks, however, to our um, our partners and the people who helped to make this happen, including the Broward County Cultural Division and uh, Community Foundation of Broward, who you know really helped to facilitate all of the great work that we're able to do um, with our artist community. So let me jump sure. and talk. And, and Yes, and I'm... History of Fort Lauderdale, who hosts oh my gosh. where we actually have the art on display. So I didn't want to leave the moment. So if you're thanking our partners. Fuck me for doing that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Miss Sonia, let's hop over to Trinidad. Um, this is your second time being a part of this Island Imprint exhibition. And in fact, it's only two years old. So you've been with us from the beginning. Um, you've talked to us in, in, in other settings about <laughs> feeling... Um, feeling a comfort, feeling a level of camaraderie, um, being involved in an exhibition uh, that is presented by and inclusive of Caribbean artists. Um, that gave me the impression that in, in other settings, I, I know you've, you've, you've exhibited in, in Europe and in Trinidad and throughout the Caribbean and so forth, but in the US here, um, what what, what is the significance of being in the midst of Caribbean artists for you? Well, I, you know, as a, it's not just in our art, but we have so much to offer as Caribbean people. You know, we have a, a different perspective because of our history, because of the size of our islands, you know. Um, and regardless of what island you're from, whenever you meet another Caribbean person, that's your Caribbean sister or brother, you know, mm -hmm. because we share certain experiences that unify us as a Caribbean community. And even when we come up here, we have certain challenges that we face as uh, you know, first generation immigrants, or we are different, you know? And so it's really important, um, you know, not just to showcase our food. I mean, there's so much to, to Caribbean culture, our food, our music, there's so much influences. And in this particular 
um, these pieces that I'm actually exhibiting at um, the History Museum of Fort Lauderdale. Um, you will see a lot of also Caribbean architecture. I mean, you go down to Key West and you look at the houses, you go to different places in, in, um, in America and you see so much Caribbean influence. And I don't think people understand that that influence came from the Caribbean. That history is not really talked about or shared. And so, you know, even talking about famous Trinidadian artists, you know, there are so many famous Trinidadian artists that are around the world and maybe not known in the US. So I love being able to showcase, you know, what I do and how I do it. It's, my art is heavily influenced because you could leave the islands, but they don't ever leave you. So right. My art, my Trinidadian essence will always be a part of my art. I can't separate the two and make my art more American. My art is a result of who I am as a Caribbean woman. Hmm. So I'm happy to share that and talk about right. it whenever I can. Well, since since we're already talking to you about this, um, talk about your aesthetic. At the beginning, when you introduced yourself, you talked about how you um, look at mixed media in perhaps a different way than other people do. And you look at the end product. Well, for, for me, when I look at your work, I, it, it feels like you looked at the end product before you decided to pick whatever it is up and, and start to, to make the thing that you're making. And I'm fascinated by that because you've done things with plastic forks and at the end of it, it's like, how did that happen? And you've made beautiful dresses out of paper and, um, you know, full disclosure, myself and David in our private business, you know, uh, for profit business, I should say, um, have a magazine called Island Origins that you were featured in. And in that magazine, there were these beautiful paper dresses and jewelry that you make out of um, reclaimed items. What is the thought process that goes into the wide and varied art that you make? Um, and you even, you even take your photography, that's your work work, and turn that into art. Talk about the thought process behind that. So, um, you know, it, my art is very varied and that's why I'm a mixed media artist. So it could be photography one day, it might be art jewelry another day, it might be um, mixed media assemblages the next day. But the thing that I was talking about that sort of ties them all together is that in some way I'm always using an unexpected material and putting it into my artwork. So um, it's just, um, you know, my work, the message behind my work is really about transformation and possibilities. And I don't say that lightly in that, in that I transform the materials into something that is completely new and different and unexpected. I want people to um, look at the things that they throw in the trash or, or the things that they think as useless or unimportant or they just had one use and they throw them out. I want people to start thinking that we have a lot of materials that we can use and incorporate in new and different ways. Um, but it always starts with the thought. I mean, I mean, it's something that, you know, is emotional for me. And I start at the end with the idea or the thought or, and then I come forward and I figure out how am I going to communicate that idea by using unusual materials. So I think, I think that's what you were asking, but it usually starts with something I'm passionate about. Um, you know, that's how my collections um, start and then I figure out the art through the message. Right. Yeah. And you make political statements, but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to bring Crystal into the conversation. Um, I'm time. <laughs> <laughs> bring Crystal. Before you bring her in, before you, because I've been waiting to hear her speak because it's been it's it's been everybody else. But I did want to say hello to everyone in the chat um, in the attendee list. I see some names I recognize. And I wanted to say hello to everyone. So <laughs> back to your bringing David, in Crystal. David on the sexy man on the shadow train. All right. So Crystal, um, your aesthetic, uh, and and I, I think David and I both met you at the same event. And when we looked at your work, the thing that struck me the most was the eyes. Right. Yes. Um, your your work is about and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. I shared while Sonia was speaking just now and I'm going to share my screen again because I, you know, going to your website. 
it's all these beautiful portraits and these um, yeah. women and children and, and, you know, just with these big, beautiful eyes. Um, where did that come from? Um, what is the inspiration behind your personal aesthetic? Well, I just have an interest in people and their stories. And I just find very uh, unique people to be so interesting to me. I want to meet them and I want to know them. And usually, you know, we walk on the street and we pass people and we never give it a second thought. So when I see a face that comes across that they have a story to tell or they've been through something or, or they're showing um, a, 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 some kind of perspective that is unusual, I feel like I have to capture it. And I'm really big on painting their the eyes. That's my favorite part to paint. But, you know, when you're looking at their eyes, it, it commands your attention. It kind of pulls you in. It's an invitation to get to know that person. You're now looking at that person eye to eye. You can't look away. <laughs> um, and so I, I feel like once you are connected through the eyes, that's when your questions arise. Who is this person that I'm looking at? Um, what is it that I have in common with them? Or what are the differences? Um, and you tend to, and this is exactly what I want, you tend to want to know about that person. You would have walked past them on the street, but now you're looking at them eye to eye, you want to know about them and um, you want to hear their story. Why? What is it that is so unique about this person? And in that moment, you have, because you notice I've, I paint women and children mostly, but mm. it's not... Um, it's not wealthy people. It's 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 more of um, everyday you know, or, or everyday children mm -hmm. and women that we see. So what is it about this person that is you know demanding my attention right here? So you're getting to know a person. You're looking beyond their destitution. Maybe you're looking beyond the color of their skin. You're looking beyond the differences, and um, you're getting an an education. Um, which is very necessary in these times um you know somebody who is you know a different skin color than you a different you know class than you race um you know Do you actually go and take pick, capture pictures of people on a phone and then go back and paint or you stand there and and you know, I, I some some i do some i do mm. some pictures i do take myself some pictures i look through magazines um I, I search out faces anywhere that I can find them and then I mix them. So you will find maybe my eyes or my child's eyes with somebody else's nose, with somebody else's mouth. And then you I was going to ask you because I see you. <laughs> so so uh, most of my paintings, actually, I can see my children in them. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. I but guess that's, that's what drew me in in the first place is a similarity of something that I'm seeing and that I love. Right. It's so interesting. Crystal, I'm actually going to take off my glasses so you can see my eyes a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the subject for my next portrait, David. <laughs> no, I know I'm not a child or a woman. That's in case you find it interesting. But I can use um, your eyes. <laughs> yes, fabulous. <laughs> um, so, Crystal, though, um, is there is there a political or social statement that you are making in these pictures? You know, I am. It's not a blatant one, but uh, um, education is a, a really important part of the social statement that is being made right now, especially with Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are we are hurt. Mm -hmm. We want people to understand, and that's very important. And we want people to be educated. And so, when you meet new people, whichever way you meet it, for me, it's through my art. Uh, and you understand people and you find a similarity and you find a connection, then th that's, that is what I am uh, trying to achieve through my art. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's not a blatant statement, mm -hmm. but it is, it's the education side of it. Okay. Okay. Um, interesting, particularly since you've gone into education, but I, I, I know from your bio that you have not had much formal training, um, 
in art before I, before I'm going to go back to um to Sonia because I want to get into the politics of art as well. But before I go to Sonia, I, I do want to ask you the question: um, How long since you said you you didn't spend a lot of time um, being educated in art? How long have you been doing it, and how long did it take you to? Um, I don't want to say perfect your technique because nobody ever thinks they per have perfected anything, but but to to find yourself in your style of of painting or work. So I'm still, I'm still creating a style. <laughs> uh, I know you're going to say that, but I'm, it's there. <laughs> I'm trying different mediums. I'm trying, you know, to loosen up my hand. I'm trying to put more expression, more movement. I'm trying to move from one subject to a single subject to, you know, you know, three people in a painting, two people mm -hmm. in a painting where we're now focused on um, the, the, the moment and not just the actual person, but the connection between people. Mm -hmm. So, um, how long, have, it, how long did that take to happen? It's still happening. It's still <laughs> happening. What, 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 what I can say is that I'm not at a level where somebody can say, I don't think I am. Um, oh, there is a crystal subdual piece of art, but I'm at a stage where people can say, oh my gosh, that is exactly something crystal would paint, or that right. looks like someone crystal would paint. So they are recognizing me even though mm. I don't have a set style as yet because I'm still trying to cultivate and, and play around. How long have you been working on it? Ah, uh, is that way? <laughs> uh, professionally, maybe about three years. Okay. Dedicated, maybe about three years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Sonia. <laughs> thank That's you. For... Long, actually, but <laughs> very nice. Um, Sonia, let me jump over to you now. Um, you so we talked about this. We Sonia and I had a, a nice discussion yesterday on our Facebook Live. Um, and we talked about you put it kind of putting messages into your art. And you are you you Sonia are very outspoken in terms of politics and human rights and um you know supportive of black lives matter movement i saw you speak out about kids in cages and you've actually even um created work based on that um yeah. talk about how you use your art to make political statements well um you know once again i'll be angered by something i might see in um you know, social media or in current affairs or on the news. I actually have a piece called I Have a Dream Too, which has a little brown porcelain doll head with an American flag inside of a cage. There you go. Yeah. Um, you know, I also have one called Shit Talk and Kofifi, which is you know, two tin can phones that we used to use as kids, you know, in Jamaica and Trinidad when you're young and thing and you don't have all these like, you know, we used to use tin can phones in my day and it's all tangled in a knot and it's got a Twitter bird on top. I won best in show for that at one of the um, exhibitions. But, you know, it's it's about communicating another piece that's probably on the screen that you're looking at there is called the experiment and each one of those test tubes is filled with all these little found objects and old letters and typewriter keys and all the ways we used to communicate and my point was that we have all these methods of communicating and instead of coming closer together we seem to be um having more of a problem in communication and um you know and a lot of my work also has threads in it um you'll see my um in those photographs you know purgatory thinking out loud empty spaces threads are a very important part of a lot of my work because for me it represents the sewing stitching together bringing together and repairing things that are damaged and broken so you'll see a lot of threads in my newer collections um, and used in different ways. Um, so, you know, there, it just depends on the message. But yes, I, I do tend to get very political because, you know, I have very pretty, beautiful art also. Mm. Uh, but sometimes I need to put that aside and I need to, I, I really want to have discussions. I want to put work out there, not tell people what to think, but at least create a question or a conversation where they can create their own opinion about the piece or how they feel about it. And you, you know, you can tell both from the intricacy of the pieces 
and the way you speak about them and the level of detail when you when you talked about this the stuff in the test tubes i didn't even zoom into the picture that much to realize that there were um objects that were pertinent to the message that you were delivering um yeah. in that so i, I i'm learning I, I, I just want to say there there was actually um letters in there that i found at a flea market from a husband writing to his wife during world war ii wow and the problems they were having in communication and all the fears he had that she was having a baby and he couldn't be there and these mm. letters were in the trash and so i took pieces of those letters and incorporated them throughout that piece um there's a lot of time and a lot of collection of the right materials that go into those messages so thank you for noticing that that's very that's deep very that deep david sexy man that's me that's um, um, oh yeah how, how deep do you get with your <laughs> <laughs> their photography and while you're talking i'm gonna also go ahead and bring the the virtual uh exhibition on screen so people can see some of the work that we're kind of looking at here as well so okay well yeah. what's, so, what's your approach let me let me phrase a question properly what is your approach um you, you talked about wanting to you know realism when you are taking your photographs and you and I have had some back and forth because you will put like women will have a little here on their chin or, or a little bump somewhere. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, can you Photoshop it out? And, and your stand is no, because that is what's beautiful to you. So yeah, I know it's not a, quite a political statement, but what's the statement you make with your art? Well, I actually do think of it as political and, and I challenge people to change their thinking again in, in, in a subtle way. I'm, I'm not um overt with an angry message or with a strong message but I, I do want for people to see beauty in things that are not commonly viewed in that way um particularly surrounding people and so a big part of why i don't edit people's appearances is because i believe that there is beauty to be found in all aspects of people i don't think we need to um uh, do what's called you know uh making something perfect for it to become beautiful i believe things are beautiful as they are naturally and so i in in my message in terms of my work i both like to share how i see people individually and then um some of what you are currently showing on the screen is how i like to show culture in in its sort of natural occurrence so i'll speak more at first about what it is that i like to show when it when it comes to individuals. So when, when I show um, individuals, I typically um, I'm working to show people as I see them, not as they see themselves. I've you know encountered a lot of, especially unfortunately, um, women of, of uh, color, women of African descent, um, who are not pleased with most of their natural beauty. And I fight to, you know, to really show how I see their beauty and, and what I consider their natural beauty. Um, uh, beyond that, though, I think that there is um, even more uh, beauty to be found in how it is that we have sort of uh, grown our cultures. And so you'll find that in a lot of my imagery, you'll find what people may just think of, oh, this is everyday life without anything special occurring. But I find that there is beauty in the movement, beauty in the way we connect. I heard connection mentioned earlier. And then I think there is beauty about really how we are all so different, but yet share in some commonalities. And I think that that's always a part of what it is that I try to share. And I'll leave you with this last part is that I think that a lot of people overlook the moments from day to day that are so special and I love to be able to capture a moment and to share it with people so that for a long moment after the moment, we can still enjoy what took place in that space and time. So while um, you're on while you're on that point, just a quick plug for the photo art project that is coming up and um, and how exactly what you're seeing now, just capturing the moments that are typical to us um, is the the perspective behind how we're looking at people to submit for that project. Okay, so, uh, and again, the project that Kelly is speaking of here, for those who are unfamiliar, is a project that's called Caribbean American. So that project is a specific project we're working that will be coming out later in 2020. 
um, that project specifically is in celebration of the Caribbean American, uh, how we as Caribbean people celebrate our lives in this um, different space. So being in America, you know, is a different experience of our Caribbean culture. And what that, the things that we do here that signify that, that, that shows our individualism, but yet our collective community is what that project is all about. So in the ways that we, you know, sort of congregate in the ways that we express our culture, in the ways that we just simply eat our food or display our food or 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 um, show pride through our flags and and the various things. This project is specifically about celebrating that, and we are open to submissions of people who have work that helps this to showcase what it is to be Caribbean American, and that could be any perspective. We're not we're not limiting it to you know the the the, the thoughts of a of a of a Bayesian or the thoughts of a Bahamian or of someone from Cuba. We want it to be anyone's perspective. It could be an American who sees Caribbean culture on display, who wants to share their expressions and feelings about the way that we congregate and the way we do things. But it's an overall project that's going to be featuring the work of a number of photographers and getting a collective view with the, um, the goal of producing a book of these images in the near future that celebrates what it is to be Caribbean American. Amen, my brother. All right, I love it. Um, so, uh, so, so on your screen, thank you for sharing that, David. And and I want to say, um, you know, that project is, I think, special to the organization because David, as the president of the organization, um, is his his main thing, his main art form is photography. His only art form is photography. <laughs> Um, I don't know that you're a singer or a painter or anything, but, you know, David is an, a fantastic photographer and this is allowing him to, um, you know, participate. All of us, all of us in this organization want to have our hands dirty and participate in the creative work uh, that we're facilitating. So we don't just find artists to, to, to celebrate and pull into the productions. We jump into it with both heart, with both feet and, and wholeheartedly as well. Um, so what you're seeing on the screen is actually the virtual version of the Island Imprint project. Um, if you would like to see it in person, some of the all of these pieces are not there, but um, many of them are there at the uh, the actual exhibition at History Fort Lauderdale. It will be up until June 29th. But wherever you're watching from, you know, anywhere in the world, you can certainly log on and um, to to the shortcut is islandspacefl.org slash imprint 2020 virtual. If that's too long, just go to the website island, islandspacefl.org and go to our projects. You'll see the link directly there. Uh, but what we've been looking at, you can, you can literally walk through the space. Uh, I like to do it where I do a self-guided kind of tour and you can just drop you know plop your feet anywhere you see this green thing on the ground you can plop your feet anywhere and be in front of whichever image that you'd like to look at the artist statements or bios are here on the wall um down here to the back we'll we'll go visit our wall of thank yous to the people who have supported the project um but the wall that we're looking at right now is um sonia's art but i'm actually going to start with crystal uh, Crystal's art over here. And you talked about, Crystal, um, individual images versus like this one with the three little boys, Golden. Is that, I, I, I was yeah. a little confused about the names and if we were getting them correctly. Um, but these three little boys, tell us about them. Okay, um, these were actually three separate images that I put together to create this moment. Um, of three friends having a grand time laughing. And of course, you know, we can remember back in school days when we were with our friends, it should stir up some emotion in you uh, of um, friend school or high school memories with your friends or your cousins, or, you know, usually that's how we are as Caribbean children. We have a lot of children around at all time. But um, Golden, the name came about because obviously the, the color of the background ended up being gold, but the moment itself 
it's golden. The, 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 it's golden um, where we have those three boys laughing their hearts out. And it's just a, such a pure golden moment. And that's how I came up with that name for that. Mm -hmm. And living their life like they're golden. Living the life like they're golden. <laughs> um, and let, let's look at some of these, these other pieces. Again, the eyes, this one. He, what's the name? His, his, Hezekiah. Hezekiah. He so I actually, Who is he? <laughs> I actually have a, I had a student named um, Hezekiah. He was one of my art students. Um, he's no longer with us. He's a baby. He was about six years old. Mm -hmm. um, his personality, he was just the most humble, sweetest child. Um, very meek. And mm -hmm. when I came across this image, it just reminded me of him. I got the same vibe from this little boy that I was painting. Um, he, the mother, Hezekiah's mother actually asked about that painting. She asked if I did a painting of her son. So she was seeing him <laughs> through this little boy as well mm -hmm. um it was just the spirit that i captured um in his eyes you could see that he was very meek and mild so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah this is the only one of that collection that actually had some bright colors in there um is there a reason that you or, or when when do you decide to go color and when do you go black and white is that for a reason i've actually only painted in color. I mean, the, the black and white ones are mm -hmm. just the three black and white that I've done. I mean, my, my preference is color mm -hmm. because I, I, I believe it just brings about so much more emotion. And that's what our people is about. You know, we have a, mm -hmm. we have a, a vibrance about us. Mm -hmm. And I try to bring that across with my color choices, the energy that we, we bring to life, mm -hmm. you know, so the, the black and white set you're seeing, those were the only ones that I've done black and white. Usually I prefer color. In your <laughs> but, um, but the emotion just carries through so much regardless. So um, no, thank you for, for you know, allowing us to, to showcase these. Um, Sonia, this is from a, a collection that you have called Fragments, where you took pictures, I'm assuming in Trinidad, but correct me if I'm incorrect, where you went and took pictures of bush and um uh, you know um old rickety houses and plants and birds and so forth and manipulated them with an iphone to get all these yeah. and, then, and then put them on what kind of backgrounds talk about talk about these okay so this for me you know i'm a, I'm a professional photographer so i'm around professional cameras all the time and i think my message with this you know, it was kind of like an uh, uh, outrage in the art community when I proposed <laughs> to even do an exhibition with iPhone using an iPhone camera. But my message there is that that's just a tool, you know, that's that's just the vehicle that I'm using right now to get my message across. Um, it's no different than you being a writer and you're writing on a computer typewriter with a pencil. It's just a tool to express yourself. And what I did with this exhibition was I wanted to create a contrast between the textures and the things, the reality of the things that inspire me and the new technology. So these prints are actually printed, dye sublimation prints on metal aluminum sheets. And then they are float mounted. So they're about an inch or two apart from the background, but the backgrounds are all made from recycled materials. So in the ones of the houses, those are actually recycled floorboards from houses that were demolished and thrown in the trash. The mm -hmm. ones with the um, coconuts, that's actually coconut bark from a coconut tree and cut in squares and put together as the base. So that other one, the other coconut one that's right there on screen right now, I'm actually using the coconut, um, um, I, f I forget there, you know, the actual from the coconut flower, the actual little sort of um, spikelets, I think they're called spikelets, oh, yes. coconut spikelets. And they're all lined up, you know, yes. when I when I shipped this exhibition down to Trinidad, a lot of the spikelets had come off of my original frame. I went to the coconut vendor, you know, and he thought I wanted to buy coconut. I'm like, no, no, give me all those dry things that you have in the trash. You know, I want all of that. And he's like, okay, lady, here you go. You know? 
The one with the bamboo, that's real bamboo. You know, the ones that I do of the mangrove, those are made from real mangrove. So the actual frames took me longer, but I will say this about the photography because it's different from David's perspective because mm -hmm. I also agree with him. Um, for me, that authenticity that I'm trying to capture is in these beautiful textures and colors that we see throughout the Caribbean. I take an iPhone image, I strip it down into a line drawing, and then I go back in and I hand color and add colors to it. Oh. So I am transforming even the, the, the thing, you know, the, that's the thing about art. Once you know the rules, you can go out there and you can break them and you can mm -hmm. create whatever your vision is of those tools that you've been given. They are just tools. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of contrast in these pieces, um, you know, and the mm -hmm. texture is very, very important to me and using things that people would throw in the trash and recreate. You call that upcycling. I call mm -hmm. it upcycling, recycling, repurposing. That you, that you learn from your mama. Yeah, transformation and possibilities. <laughs> yeah, my mom is the original recycler for sure. I hate to interrupt, but I, I feel it's important to tell people that you cannot know what this is like on a two-dimensional screen. You have to go see them in person. Mm -hmm. Even if you can't make it, to Fort Broward County, History of Fort Lauderdale by next week, Wednesday, I guess, when it comes down, you, you need to catch it at the next showing of this work because honestly, to see it in three dimensions and to see the actual, um, you know, recycled or upcycled materials and yeah. how they're put together and how the aluminum sits on those pieces is a, is a treasure. But I really do encourage people if you can find the time to go see this in person sorry for it yeah and, and it is really special and i, I again I, every time i hear you speak i'm looked at all of these beautiful um you know the the, the background materials the the materials of the you know quote unquote frame um because the the as you said the sublimation metal piece is actually floating off of it but i never realized that the frame material was actually related to the subject matter of the, the image. So, yeah. um, so very, very deep and um, very, very detailed and thoughtful the way that you approach your art. And I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I need, I need to come and visit Sonia's studio. And <laughs> mount some of my portraits on some very thoughtful background. <laughs> But, you know, I, I just want to say, I, I, I need to add to that, like even when I, in my early, early photography exhibitions, which I have one called Earthlings, which are all Trinidadian little children, I borrowed my friend's children and I painted them with mud. And, but even in those portraits, the frames are all handmade. So I would love to share that with you because your work is so powerful already and a, a frame that complements it that is speaking continuing your message it's wonderful so i'm glad to make that connection so we will collaborate these two are so cute yesterday when we were or did they were doing the the practice session they were just loving on each other it's just amazing it's beautiful <laughs> on each other too <laughs> yes but don't tell anybody <laughs> um, that, that might be considered cheating so um so 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 and and i i do i do want to say if you are listening or watching and you are an artist yourself if you know of fabulous artists you see the caliber of people that we like to work with and promote um, and we we do that through all of our channels, whether it is our you know nonprofit artistic agency or even our you know our our for profit um, publications and so forth. The, the next issue the issue coming out is the arts issue. So if you know of someone who should be featured, who should participate in one of our upcoming events, please do reach out and let us know. Um, I'm going to mention briefly. You can visit on your own time again, but. It's not just art that was a part of this or is a part of this exhibition. There is a historical component as well. And because it was the, the exhibition was supported by Broward organizations primarily, we did a deep dive into uh, the Caribbean heritage of 
Broward County. So you're not going to see a whole bunch about Miami in this. It's the first settlers to Fort the Fort Lauderdale area from the Bahamas and the um, you know, the, the Cuban influence um, in the architecture of the region and the mobilization, the, the, the Immigration Act of 1965 and how that brought the, the swelling of Cubans and Haitians into the region, uh, Cubans and Jamaicans, sorry, into the region and Haitians. Um, you know, some of the celebrities who have come out of Broward County, uh, some of the elected officials who have been uh, important and special to the, to the area. And then what our populations look like right now. Uh, believe it or not, Broward is now a minority, majority minority county uh, with a whole lot of Cubans. I believe it is uh, almost 10% Haitian or, or is either 10% Jamaican and Haitian or 10% Haitian. That is how much of a concentration there is of us in Broward County. And so I will invite you on your own time to read about the history uh, part of this exhibition as well. Uh, but we have about seven minutes left. I know we don't have a whole bunch of people watching, or maybe I'm just uh, seeing wrong. But if if anyone has any questions that you would like to ask of myself or the artists, please go ahead and do so now. Um, in the chat, in the chat, questions in the chat. I don't know how to do that. How do you do that? No, not you. I'm telling oh. you. That. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I will say um, a special shout out again. A few people I see, um, the wonderful Kathleen Dean is in the in the attendee group, as well as um, G Wright and Camille Edwards. And Camille Edwards actually sent me a message separately um, here in, in WhatsApp saying that, hi, David, I'm loving this webinar. What <laughs> museum is exhibition at? And I, the reason I read that out is it's fortunate when I know of other people and they can message me. But just for everyone else's ears, um, again, it's at History Fort Lauderdale, which is downtown Fort Lauderdale. It's right there on Southwest 2nd Street, right by the train track. And it's not hard to, to find once you look up History Fort Lauderdale. Um, so I just wanted to say that for those who may not have been aware where they could go and see the work. Okay, gotcha. Thank you for sharing that, David, and thank you for the question. Um, did anyone have any questions? Uh, panelists, do you have any questions for each other? <laughs> um, I am so interested in what Sonia does. And let me tell you, I am I'm very interested in things that I cannot do uh -huh. or cannot imagine because, you know, like, like I tell you that um, people intrigue me. Um, I don't know necessarily that I have a question for Sonia, but I want I would like to sit and shadow Sonia for a day. <laughs> because because that's where you learn how someone thinks, you know? Okay. You know yeah. Movements and, and what you gravitate towards. So that's really what I'm interested in. I I really would love to <laughs> to be a part of your creative process. Or do you post videos then with your creative process? I don't know if we could well, be a part of your creative process. Yeah, there, well, you, there's lots of places to find me. I'm broken up into different areas. Like I have a website for my commercial art. I have a website for my fine art and photography. And then I have another website for all my art, jewelry and mixed media art. So, yeah, you know, you'll find me on Instagram. Um, you'll find me by my name on Instagram. And then when you go down on Instagram, it'll link you to other things. So, okay. Sonia Sanchez, Arias, uh, um, you know, Sanchez Arias Photography, you'll find me on, on my Instagram. And then also creative child, and that's creative with an eight. Instead of an A, it has an eight creative child. But okay. I will just say that, you know, coming back to you and learning from other people, the reason I became a photographer was because in art class, I would spend hours drawing and then somebody like you would come along and create something and I would look next to it and go, well, I'm, you know, I, I just felt like I was very good at drawing, so I picked up a camera. Um, but I am part of, I've, my mother was an artist and so I've always been involved in art, but I want to tell you that my studio, I have two studios. I have my, what I call my science, my mad scientist lab, mm -hmm. which is shelves and shelves and containers of found objects that are waiting to be 
used in some way and turned into something incorporated into art mm -hmm. and um and then i have my other studio that i share with my ocd oh. husband <laughs> very neat and tidy and everything has its place so um i i'm happy to invite you here and i would love to um you know learn more about your art and your experiences as someone born in america moving to jamaica where is the opposite from me i'm i'm a trinidadian and moving to america that was a whole and it still is a learning process for me but i've been living here longer than in trinidad and um it's it's hard it's harder for us to get together because there's more space you know yeah in right. yeah. jamaica and trinidad you know you can't move far you know so crystal can you go ahead and share how people can find you online as well right so i have my website crystalsabdil.com and then i'm also on instagram and instagram is is where i post um most of my stuff daily. You, I, I'm more active on Instagram at Crystal Sabdul. And spell um, that Crystal because it's not. K R Y S T L E S A B D U L. Yes. yes. I'm, right. I'm, I'm going to put mine in the chat down here, yes. but mine is Sonia Sanchez Arias.com. So Sonia with a Y, S O N Y A. Yes. And, um, and David Sexyman.com, how'd that go? Yeah, you can find me at sexyman.com or if it's on Instagram, I'm David Imuir and on uh, Facebook and those types of platforms. I'm David Imuir. I always leave the I because that, that pesky guy on ABC World shares my name. And I, and I have to let people know I'm the one that has the I. He's just the I. I have the I. I. That, that, that right. crystal hasn't painted yet. <laughs> right, not yet, but one day, if I even have to commission it. <laughs> um, yeah, and you can find me at Kaleeb Thompson, it's C-A-L-I-B-E-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. And of course, Island Space is Island Space FL, as in Florida, everywhere that you want to find us. Um, before you, before we go, any final thoughts from our panelists? Um, and I'm going to say before say, David, I believe that the mission of Island Space has been accomplished today because we have educated people and we've shared our culture and our arts, um, you know, and and I think we are doing a great job of uplifting um, our artist community. Um, I think we're doing a great job or the people, the, the people that we even bring into our orbit orbit are doing a great job of sharing their own culture and heritage and love of art and how we can make everything excellent and be excellent. So that's my two cents. Um, Sexy man, I'm going to pass it to you. Okay. I am, of course, thrilled that we have had the opportunity to have this. Thanks again to West Regional Library. I see Miss. Uh, Gloria. Gloria is 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 back in the scene um I, and of course as you've mentioned before i have to thank uh specifically the community foundation of broward for the funding that they've um, helped us with to put on our program to the broward county cultural division for their assistance the history fort lauderdale for hosting us and their financial contribution and without the artists we would be nothing and so to the artists who are a part of this particular show, obviously Crystal and Sonia, who I feel are my Caribbean sisters, and I'm just love. I just love working with my fellow Caribbean people in the arts. Amen. For participating, there we have lots more to do together. And um, just thanks to everyone who participated, the audience, uh, and uh, really thank you to everyone who who stayed the hour with us. And I have to say, everybody that is um, in our orbit. Um, I feel like they get more attractive as they're, you know, around us. <laughs> I, I noticed a trend. So yeah, sorry, Crystal. Crystal, your parting words. <laughs> um, thank you guys for having me. I'm I'm really honored to be here and to to meet my fellow artists and see the work that you're doing. I think it's extremely important what you guys are are doing, and it's at an extremely important time educating everybody. So I'm happy to be a part of that. Um, think. Please continue to think of me uh, and Sonia and, and just any other artist who can who you feel can uplift and educate. Um, I'll also 
drop a few names um, for any of your other events because it's not about, um, it's not a competition. We're educating people here and there's a space for everybody. Everybody has a story to tell and it's a very important story. And now people are listening. People are actually mm -hmm. listening. It's a very good time for us. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just honored to be a part of this. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Sonia, final thoughts. Okay, so I just want to say that um, the Caribbean, our Caribbean heritage is filled with so many different colors and textures and culture and flavors, and it makes this incredible tapestry that is so filled with possibility and potential. And it's always my honor to share even just one thread of that ta tapestry with you. And I just want to to, uh, you know, go add to what Crystal just said, that art is so important right now. I, I just want to take a moment and read a quotation from a very famous Caribbean artist called Peter Minshall. And he says, consider the things for which a people are regarded or remembered. Consider all the historic peoples and nations from the Egyptians to the Greeks, the Romans, India, China, Africa, Western Europe, the primitive and the sophisticated. For all the industry and commerce and military might they possess, it is not for these things that they are primarily and quintessentially remembered, but for their art, for their paintings, for yeah. their literature, for their music, for their theater, philosophy, dance, sculpture, and architecture. The creative expressions of a people are what represent it to the rest of the world. So mm -hmm. art is really important because it's what we are, will be treasured for and remembered by. So I encourage more art, especially in these times right now. Spectacular. Thank you. So you're so wise, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, guys, and I'm going to invite us to do this again on our Island Space um, Facebook Live platform. Um, you know, uh, Gloria, I, I see you coming back in and I want to say thank you again to yourself, to our friends at the library. I believe we're having a discussion about bringing this exhibition to the library as well. Um, and I think it, it might be it might behoove us to look at a library tour of some sort. So we're touching, you know, all of Broward with this spectacular <laughs> art. Sorry, sexy man, I know it's you have to go. I know that's the work <laughs> you've before. Um, it, it's been before. It's up for discussion. I'm not, I'm not putting anybody on the hook, but, um, but our, you know, our objective is to share this stuff with people. And as you said, it's, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're happy to share it online. We're happy to share it virtually so everybody all over the world can see. But if you're here in in, for, in Broward County or in South Florida or visiting and you can come and see this work, it's important to see it in 2D. It, it, it touched me differently seeing these works, um, sorry, in, three, in, in 3D in person um, differently from what we did here in, in the, the virtual exhibition. So thank you, Miss Laurie. I'll give the microphone back to you. Can I hear you? I think you're muted. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gotta love technology. Okay. So uh, again, thank every. Uh, just want to thank everyone for joining us today in our uh, meeting here with our wonderful, wonderful participants and um, individuals. Um, on the screen, you will see information about Island Space. Also, the website for Island Space, Florida.org. Right now, the uh, exhibit is being shown at History Fort Lauderdale, as they stated earlier. Their website is historyfortlauderdale.org, and it's located at 231 Southwest 2nd Avenue in Fort Lauderdale. At the bottom, you will see the artist's contact information for David Muir, Crystal Sabdul, and Sonia Sanchez Arias. Uh, their websites are there on the page. So if you want to take some time to take that down, Broward County Library thanks you for joining us for our online program today of Island Imprints. And if you have some time, please go check out our website and join us virtually for our upcoming programs at Broward County Library. And with that, I would like to thank you all for attending and have a great and sensational day. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.